So, okay, thank you for your attention. I, I would like to show you, I'd like to share some ideas about schema coaching for parents. So what, why, why would, how, how do we come to, to that actually? So what was our experience? Um, our experience was that parents are often struggling. They are actually overwhelmed or they, they feel powerless mm -hmm. by the dysfunctional behavior of the children. So usually they have tried a lot to change the behavior but they were not successful and usually they are totally frustrated. This is my experience. So we are talking about parents who are overwhelmed or who are who feel helpless by their children's behavior. They, they have no control and they don't know how to help them. And this is somehow our also a little bit embarrassing for parents that they feel bad that they feel I'm a bad mother or father because I have to bring my child to a psychotherapist and this is really a shame and, and so on. So what I want to say is that we have to be very, very gentle and caring to parents as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> so otherwise they would be only in their detached protector and they will not tell us about the real issues. So the first thing is actually is the same as all patients, they need to build up trust and they need to feel this therapist is not only someone who helps my child, but he's also one who helps me and who has also understanding for my difficulties. So the main point is actually to build up a trustful relationship. And what does not really work is my experience uh, just to advise or to counsel parents. So this is something, um, what is a, a good attempt so we can explain how, how does your child function or how is it working with the consequences and so on. And this is for sure also important. But the main problem for parents is of emotional nature. It's not a lack of knowledge how to raise my children. It is more an emotional issue that they feel hurt or that they feel emotionally triggered by their children's dysfunctional behavior. So it is not a cognitive problem, it is an emotional problem so when parents feel overwhelmed in most cases. And we are not really successful in training them alone. Training is important, but first we need actually to clarify what exactly is going on in the parent when their children behave the way how they do. So the point is now in schema coaching for parents that we try to focus a lot on the needs, schemas and modes of the parent. So this is the point. So of course we are working with a child, but beside of that in separate sessions, we invite the parents if possible both, if they understand, if they do not understand each other, we're working with a main caregiver. And the main caregiver is usually the mother and we would invite the mother now to let the child as it is and to offer a support for the mother because we really invite them or we, we would appreciate what they have done already that they are a wonderful mother, that they have done so much. Maybe they haven't been perfect, but of course, who's perfect? So not the therapist, no, no one is perfect. Even if they have done mistakes, they haven't done that uh, deliberately. So they have, they, maybe they have misunderstood something, but this is nothing what we have to blame them for. So we really try to make them understand I'm on your side and I really want to help you to have a better relationship with your child and to be 
more successful and to have less clashes with your child. So this is a the, the fundament actually. So we try to to make them clear, I'm on your side, mom or dad. And let's try to focus now on what are your needs? What are your emotional buttons? And what's going on on your inner stage when your child is showing this difficult behavior? So this is actually a more emotional approach, which uh, includes also the question of how they have experienced their own childhood. So this is quite common that we come sooner or later to the question, how was your childhood? What wow. did you like to your parents? What was good? What was problematic? What would you have wished? Or what would you have needed from your parents? Because of course, our own experiences from our own childhood influence our behavior in in the here and now. So we cannot separate that. And we are deeply rooted in our own childhood. So it, it really makes sense to consider uh, what was my own experiences in order to have a better clear sight on my real child outside. So we do not uh, we do not try to work too emotionally with um, mother or fathers who suffer from their own psychiatric disorder. So let's say they have a borderline disorder or they have a depression, a depressive episode. We would encourage them to look for their own therapist. So what we talk about is a normal family, is a normal burdened family who's just speechless, helpless, but who are not psychic, uh, who do not have a mental uh, uh, disorder. So normal, normally burdened family. Okay, so what is a very, very basic uh, point I would like to show you one picture and that shows the interaction of schemas and modes. So on the one side, we have the sketch as I have shown you from the child. We have a response, let's say any symptom, and we have on the other hand, the, the situation in which the symptom appears. And between we have this mode sketch with the schemas, uh, we have the modes. And finally, we have one mode who produces a symptom. This is a sketch of the case conceptualization for the children. Okay, this is one hand. This is on, the, on, on one side. On the other side is what's going on with the parents when the children produces their dysfunctional mode. And See, I have a little distraction here. Okay. And usually what we find is that parents have their scheme have schemas as well from their own childhood. So according to Jeffrey Young, every every human being has schemas in a more or less intense way. But so parents usually uh, <clears throat> have emotional buttons, for example, for the dysfunctional behavior of the children because they're totally frustrated and they are somehow um, very, very sensitive to a certain dysfunctional behavior. And they have built up their own schemas. For example, a failure schema that they feel like I have failed as a parent because I cannot help my, my, my child to behave in another way. So, or let's say defectiveness and shame. They feel bad as a whole person, as a, as a parent, but also as human being, they feel defective. Or maybe they have an emotional deprivation schema or mistrust schema or whatever, whatever they have experienced in their own childhood. 
And when the child produces his dysfunctional behavior, it goes straight into their wound. So we have, a, we try to visualize, as you see on the slide, we try to visualize what are your emotional buttons or what are your wounds and which modes are relevant for the upbringing uh, task. So we do not help, we do not um, initiate a schema therapy for the patient, for the parents, but we help to, um, to become a competent mother or father in upbringing issues. So this is a differentiation. We're not doing a schema therapy for them in general. We help them to overcome blocking patterns which stands beside, uh, well, in, well, which blocks them to show um, or to give them their children what they need, what, whatever it is, whatever the needs are of the children, but to be a, a competent parent to the child's needs, real child needs. Yeah. Okay, and therefore we try to understand um, with them together what are the wounds and what is a vulnerable child, where, when does a ch vulnerable child of the mother or father pops up and how do they cope with it? How do they cope with it? And we have usually the dysfunctional parental coping modes, which are usually, uh, let's say, surrender, I just give in and don't say anything to the child's dysfunctional behavior. So that, that would be bad, of course. I just give in, surrender, or I avoid, avoid my child's because um, I, I cannot stand the dysfunctional behavior, so I avoid it, or I'm escaping from it. Or I overcompensate, and I, and I fight, and I exaggerate my action, and I'm being aggressive, or I don't know, threatening to my child, or in any way overcompensating. So these are the dysfunctional modes of a parent who feels overwhelmed. And what we try to foster here to, uh, to, to strengthen is a so-called caring and guidance mode. So this is uh, the name for the mode, for the healthy adult mode, when we do schema coaching for parents. So we call it guidance and caring mode. What does it mean? Guidance concerning or related to the need of um, well, helping the child to find some structure or to um, to help them to accept rules or to take on the duties or whatever. So this is something what the child needs some guidance, well, or appreciative or a warm kind of guidance. This is one thing. And the other needs are like attachment, or autonomy, or self-worth, or spontaneity. Here the child needs caring, a caring notion, a caring position from the parents. So here the parents try to support their children, and in structure issues or limit setting issues, the child needs guidance. So we call this mode, the healthy and adult mode, healthy adult mode in schema coaching for parents, we call that guidance and, and caring and guidance mode. So this is the mode which we try to strengthen and we try to make bigger and stronger and to disempower the dysfunctional mode. And um, of course the dysfunctional mode of a parent is somehow connected to their own childhood. And this is what we try to, to um, win the, par the parent. How was your own childhood and how is this experience you have had in your own childhood connected with it, with a here and now experience? So the central question would be, how would your parents, your own parents have responded if you would show this behavior your child chose now to you. Mm -hmm. So usually parents would say they would have beaten me up 
or they would have ignored me or whatever, any really bad thing. And we try to invite them to understand, so this little, and then we call it the first name of the parent. Let's say, uh, it would say, um, she would, uh, uh, the first name would be Sally. The little Sally of Mrs. Smith, let's say Sally Smith is the name of the mother. So what would little Sally, what would the little Sally feel like? If now her real son in, in the here and now is behaving or has some attributes as like the father of little Sally, let's say. Let's say the father was maybe um, devaluating or was in a way, I don't know, harsh or overcompensating when Sally has made some mistakes. And now the boy, the real boy of Mrs. Smith is showing some res disrespectful behavior and then pops up the old movie from, from the past. And Mrs. Smith is not any longer the mother, she is little Sally who feels attacked and feels treated bad, really bad. And then the old movie from the past comes into her mind and she pours down all this or her emotion on her real child. And this is something what the child has not deserved. Okay, he has done a mistake or he was rude, he was disrespectful, he needs some adequate consequences. But the child has not deserved the whole, the whole old story's emotion, what belongs to another person, to the father, of course, of Mrs. Smith, and not to, to the child. So we try to, to build a bridge, to build a bridge, an effective bridge. What does my real child now trigger in me? And how is it connected to my past? So what comes up? And how do I feel like when my child shows this dysfunction behavior? And we try to learn to differentiate what is my own story and what is the story what happens here. And this is something where we try to work out with parents because in our perception we sense that parents um, sometimes do not notice what's, how the emotional response, how is it rooted in them? They think their problem is a child, mm -hmm. but the child is just a trigger, to trigger an old wound of them. The child is not the problem, the child is a trigger, but it's not the cause. It is not the cause, the cause is that they have had probably similar experience in their own childhood. Hmm. And to learn about what is a, what is a trigger and what is the cause of my emotions, which I experience as a father or mother, is something what, um, what parents well have to realize or, or usually they need help by the therapist to detect what's going on in myself when my child shows that. So I don't want to make them think that they, it's their fault. I just want to learn or to discover with them what is the, um, what are my emotions are about when I'm dealing with my child. And helpful is when we give them, a, for example, a schema questionnaire, young schema questionnaire for the parents. So that we have an, it's all voluntarily, of course, but we invite them to understand the deeper levels. What is below, what is behind all these superficial clashes? So what we really try to invite them is um, to, to pick them up uh, with their own wounds and with their own um, with their own vulnerabilities. And for that, we uh, usually do a, a kind of schema genogram, a genogram which shows the child as index 
patient or identified patient, but it's not a problem. Actually, we go to the next level where the mother or father is and look at them uh, on the next generation. So what would have been messages or feelings or what are the norms of your original family? And we do a kind of schema coach, uh, schema genogram where we try to understand what are typical notions, what are typical expressions of your father, mother, so the grandfather or grandmother of the child, why the mother came. And we try to pick up what kind of schemas they might have had at that time. Or what, what were the circumstances and under which circumstances little Sally were grown up. So what were the parenting style of your patients and what happened if little Sally was rude or disrespectful? How did they respond to that? So the question is, what was good and what was really difficult for you? What did you miss when you've been a child? And we really try to understand, uh, to get an overview. So what kind of typical dysfunctional behaviors are familiar in this family system or in this uh, in these generations. So what are the parents, uh, what, what did they learn from, from their own parents in the childhood? We also address the question, how do you want to be as a father or mother? So what are your goals? Maybe they are of a kind of high standards or maybe they are somehow distorted. Maybe they have a distorted vision of how parents supposed to be, maybe as uh, as a perfect and um, never failing parent or as, as someone who has always control of everything. Or, so here we also try to understand maybe they had some dysfunctional attitudes in the parents and always try to understand where do they come from. So what did your mom or your dad learn you? how parenthood is functioning. And this is something what we, um, what we really try to understand with them together. And we, we do a lot of sketches, uh, sketches with them as well. So here, for example, this is uh, a sketch I will send you, I will give you help to show. Um, a sketch where, for example, a mother you see this one here, um, typical mode constellation. So what we try to pick up is a certain mode constellation. So on the one hand, we have the child with all the schemas and modes. On the other hand is the mother or father who is also vulnerable. And the question is, what kind of vulnerability is there? So in this slide, we have a needy child and lonely, um, a vulnerable child. It's really big displayed here in this figure. And the healthy adult of the, of the parent is, is also there, but much smaller. And if there is a, a conflict between these two, the needy child is much stronger than the adult, healthy adult. So if the child is in some way, let's say rude or disrespectful, and then the inner needy child or vulnerable child of the mother would say, I'm always getting the short end of the stick. Or I need help for myself. Or would say, who's taking care of myself? Always, my child is always crying, but I also need someone who's good to me. Who's supporting me? And then what we then have is a competition a competition of needs between the real child and between the inner child of the mother or father, which is, well, the real child against the inner vulnerable child. And this is like a, a battle. So both sides are struggling and fighting whose needs are more important. Mm -hmm. So the child would scream and would would do anything that whatever his needs are met. 
and the inner child also needs that. And then that is a typical substance of mode clashes, where we say, oh, we have two different modes uh, which are clashing. And of course, it is it's the job of the parent to find a solution, not of the child, because the parent has is much older and has much more possibilities to, to get help. It is not the job of the child to fulfill the needs of the inner child of the parent. So the parent needs, of course, needs help, but it is not the job of the parent, of the real child. It is the job of a therapist or maybe the partner or a good friend or whatever, but it is not the job of the child. That is too much demanded. And this is sometimes uh, something what we have to work out. What's on your inner stage? dear mother or father. And here, for example, is, a, is another constellation. Here we have a, a lonely inner child of the parent. So somehow the parent has a part who feels lonely, abandoned. And now the child shows any disrespectful behavior and the lonely, vulnerable part of the mother or father would say, don't leave me alone. You are everything I have. Please be good to me. And the lonely, vulnerable mode of the parent is not able to set any limits or to give any structure or to give the child what it needs, let's say, attachment and structure. Mm -hmm. No, it is too weak for that. And he is actually asking the child, please be good to me. Otherwise, I collapse or I'm not able to stand that. Then the inner, then the mother or father would be, depends on the nice behavior of the child. And maybe the child is, has a moment where he would do that, but often they would not do that. It's a child, I mean, it's not... It's not the therapist of the mother or father. So, it's, of course, it has its own uh, conflicts on the inner stage. So it's not responsible for to soothe the vulnerable child of the mother or father. Again, we have a dependency of the mother or father on the nice behavior of the child. And this is just too much for a child. This, uh, this is something where you might ask your partner, but not your child to be the child is as, as it is. Or another, another one. Let's say here we have a constellation, uh, the parents separated inner child. Let's say we have a parent, of course, who has also child modes. And of course, has also a vulnerable child, but it is isolated because the parent maybe thinks um, this is childish to feel like a child. I don't want to have my child mode. I don't want to um, appreciate too much. Actually, I'm an adult. I have to be serious and I have to be reasonable. And my child modes, I, I do not want to be like a child. And the inner child, the vulnerable child is isolated. And now this mother or father would encounter on his child who's doing, showing some problems. And the mother or father is not able to get an emotional connection or bridge to the child because their own child mode is isolated. So it's really, it's only on a rational way trying to influence the child and is maybe criticizing or demanding or punishing or in some way um, disconnected to his own inner child and therefore not able to build a bridge between the child modes. So it's actually treating his child like a, I don't know, like a computer or whatever, where he expresses certain expectancies I expect from you and you, don't be silly and you are so grown up and don't show these emotions, be serious, be like an adult, so almost to say, behave like an adult, be serious, but 
has lost contact to his own inner child. And then it's demanding, 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 and that, of course, is a big source of conflict. So, <clears throat> we have different kinds of parents who are, uh, whose inner team is also in a disbalance, yeah. who's, who are struggling a lot between all these demands from the real world, let's say from the employer and from the husband and maybe from their own parents and their children and all these material and existential issues. And this is really a difficult task. And I really think parents are often overwhelmed or they, they have really good reasons why they feel helpless when also dealing with difficult behavior of the children. But anyway, what we try to offer them is to clear, to make clear the inner stage when you, what are your emotional buttons and when pops your vulnerable child up in order to find a way to soothe, to help the parent to soothe their own inner child and to get into the caring and guidance mode and not to give way to the dysfunctional modes who shouts as a person who shouts or ignore their real children. And this is, uh, yeah, this is a, a first idea of we are all still children uh, or we have them. This is wonderful that we have our childhood still in us, but it is also a responsibility. So we, we cannot deny that we have an inner child. And this is uh, the first thing that we try to to win the patient, the parents, that they have also their own child to take care of in order to be in good connection to the real child and to find appropriate or adequate or adaptive strategies how to deal with the problematic behavior of the child. And here we use then a lot of chair dialogues, let's say it's a mode interview, or we are focusing on the inner critic. Let's say the parent has a strong inner critic with high standards, never make a mistake uh, as mother or father, then you are bad. So we are dealing a lot with the inner critic, which are in interfering with the upbringing issues or whatever the whatever the child shows. And this is something where, we're, where we can help parents. Let's say we, we do one chair dialogue, we do one imaginary with scripting from the, according to their own childhood, and a little bit psychoeducation about needs, modes, and schemas. And these are often less than 10 sessions. So we can help them a lot when we have 10 sessions just with a mother or father. No child, not yet. Later, yes, but in this phase, not. Wow. Because they, they need to be open. Otherwise, when the child is sitting there, they wouldn't be open what they have experienced from their wow. own parents. If we have 10, 10, sometimes 50 sessions, we can help parents a lot to overcome their emotional patterns or hindrances and then to then we can train them how to do how to deal with difficult behavior but first they have to connect to their own child inner child in order to to know how does my child feel and how can i pick them up uh, and give them what they need so to make a long story short, actually, we, we spending much more time with parents than usually in CBT, because we not only want to advise what to do, we do not only tell them what to do, but we want to make them understand why my emotions are so strong when I'm dealing with my child. Wonderful. So that is uh, that, <clears throat> that is the point where, where we think parents need their support as well. And um, well, we, we try to win them by being very gentle and compassionate and uh, empathic to them. And we really try to to show them 
Dear mom, I take my cap to you. What you have done, you are a wonderful mother. You are wonderful. So this is a basic in the basic fundament from where we start to deal with emotional buttons or with uh, vulnerabilities of the parents. Yeah. yeah, sometimes we have to look and we have to focus what, what is my job actually. So we, sometimes it's, uh, if we have really, um, um, we have parents who, who need their own therapist, we sometimes over, um, how to say, we, we, we cannot really help them until the end. So we would, if they, they are too much wounded, we would help them to find their own therapist. But um, usually, well, lots of parents are not uh, are normally frustrated, let's say, as you and I and every one of us would be frustrated if we have a child, let's say, with ADHD or anxiety or OCD or whatever, and we cannot help them, even as a therapist, we cannot help them. We are all frustrated and have an emotional button there when the child shows again the symptom. So we feel really indeficient, uh, uh, I'd say in, insufficient, or uh, we really we feel ashamed, hey, I'm as a therapist, cannot help my child, it's really embarrassing and so on. So parents feel the same and they need, in the first place, before training issues come, yeah. they need uh, a person who's well, who reparents them as all. Well. So we call that grand parenting, limited grand parenting. So the therapist is also like a father or mother to the to the real mother and father, and uh, <laughs> and try to give them what they have deserved for a long time, and maybe have not yet uh, received. Yeah, uh, this is a really good terming, limited grand parenting. Literally, yeah. it is. Literally, it is. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, this is a really good summary of what you are doing with, your, yeah. with the parents, yeah. the parents side. Yeah. And we appreciate your time and efforts here, Christoph. Thank, thank you, you very much. Um, I thank you. I'm very happy to to be on your side or to have the opportunity to tell you a little bit how we do it with uh, with, uh, with younger patients and their parents or caregivers. So I'm really really nice from you. Thanks a lot, Alp. That yeah. thank you invite you. me to talk a little bit yeah. about that. We will be listening with our students uh, this video and uh, I, I'm sure they will appreciate your time and effort too. And thank you uh, for being together with us here. Yes. Yeah. Very kind. Thank yeah, you. Thank you.